Okay, let's put up the um, the aspects. It's visible, I hope. It's very good. So I don't know how much, you know, in the Vedic system, in the Hindu system, I don't know how much people are really concerned with cardinal, fixed, and mutable. When I went to India, they never really talked very much about that. Um, you, maybe you can tell me, is that a common, do most people when they study Jyotish notice the cardinal, mutable, fixed, earth, air, fire, water? Do they talk about that? Uh, yeah, they talk, but it's like not very much. I think not very right. much. Yeah, yeah. In West, they talk, in it's like it's one of the topics, but it's not like very, very, very prominent. Right. In Western astrology, it's very prominent. In Western astrology, if somebody has too many Earth signs, if you know you have nine planets, if you have three or four of them in Earth signs, the person's too stubborn. Oh. If you have if you have you know four planets in air, I have a lot of air. The person's very mental and intellectual. If you have lots of fire planets and fire signs, the person is very very impulsive and fiery and energetic, like that. Yeah. So, um, and then if a person has a lot of planets in water signs like Cancer and Scorpio, Pisces. If they have a, a lot of planets in the water signs, the people are very emotional and not very rational. So those are those are quite important in the Western system. I remember, I mean, I, I don't even know if I mentioned these things. I probably do, but very minor in, in my Hindu Vedic books. I don't mention them. I just mention them. But in the Western, they're very important. Aside from the earth, air, fire, water is the cardinal fixed and mutable. So the signs with the C, Aries, Cardinal, Cancer, Cardinal, Libra, Cardinal, Capricorn, Cardinal. So Cardinal has a certain kind of expression. It's outgoing and it's very expressive and impulsive a little bit. The, the fixed signs would be Taurus is fixed, Earth. Uh, Leo is fixed, Fire. Um, uh, where's the uh, Scorpio is fixed water, and then Aquarius is fixed air. So those are the fixed signs, and then you have mutable. Mutable is Gemini, Virgo, Sag, and Pisces. Now, in the South Indian method, which I use, um, <coughs> it's 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 we we really use these corners: the mutable, mutable. There are the four corners. I don't know how it works on the um, uh, North Indian method. But in any case, the way that the aspects work is all of the mutable si signs aspect each other. So if a person, so these are the, the, the mutables are the four corners in the South Indian method, Gemini, Pisces, Sag, and Virgo. So if a person's in a Virgo Dasha or Virgo Bukti, Virgo, if you want to know how Virgo is going to be, for example, Virgo would be my fifth house. And that Virgo would be aspected by Gemini, whatever house that is. In my case, Virgo is the fifth house and it's being aspected by the other mutable signs. So this, I have a Taurus ascendant. So Gemini, my second house, would be aspecting Virgo. And that would be generally good because the second house is money. So that would make the Virgo Dasha good for money because the second house, the house of money, is aspecting it. I don't have any planets in Gemini, but if I did, those planets would be aspecting Virgo. For example, so the mutable signs aspect each other. So Virgo is aspected by Sagittarius, which is my eighth house. I don't have any planets in Sagittarius, but the eighth house aspects that Virgo. And so when I was in Virgo, having that eighth house aspect onto Virgo did not help. 
that would make for more health problems and things like that. Virgo is aspected by Pisces, which is my 11th house. And normally that would be good. You would say, oh, his Virgo house, his fifth house is aspected by the second and the 11th by Gemini and by Pisces. That would be good for money. 11th house is large sums of money and groups and friends and Gemini second house is money. But because my, because my Pisces holds Jupiter, which is the Ganadi Karaka, that means that not only is the 11th house Pisces aspecting my fifth house Virgo, it also means the Ganadi Karaka is aspecting Virgo. So that Virgo now has two strikes against it because it's aspected by the Ganadi Karaka and the eighth house like that. So if I'm in Pisces, if I'm in Pisces, which is mutable, Pisces is the 11th house. It's going to be aspected by the other mutable houses. It's going to be aspected by Gemini, by Virgo, <coughs> and by Sagittarius. If I'm in Gemini, it'll be aspected by Pisces, Sagittarius, and Virgo. So they aspect each other. Now, the other aspects go as follows. Yeah, I wanted to ask you one question regarding yeah. this. Like, as you said, because this will be there in many people's minds, and this is also frequently asked to me. So I wanted to know what's your opinion. For, for example, here you said that because Jupiter is holding the sixth degree, the planet with the sixth degree, so it is like the Gnati Karaka. So it will give you challenges. Yes? Yes, absolutely. So because that is aspect aspecting this dasha the sign so there are challenges but at the same time uh, like even on palashara's system we take this so for example like for capricorn lagna jupiter is the 12th lord so if jupiter's dasha comes as per palashara system they say there will be some challenges but at the same time it is also natural benefit right so how do you see that, that here Jupiter is the Grati Karaka, but it is also a natural benefit. So was there anything spiritual because that is signified by Jupiter or something to do with the child or anything like that? Do you, know, you, you know, the thing is my Jupiter has problems more okay. than just being Ganadi Karaka because it's aspected by Saturn. It's aspected by Saturn uh, in, you know, it's exactly opposite Saturn, but I, you know, I don't have enough experience to give an answer to that. But in my opinion, just, you know, from what I know, I, I think that the, uh, whether it's a functional ben benefic or malefic, I don't think is so important in this system. I haven't heard that it is. Maybe it is, but not from what I've heard. Because even if you take the normal Parashari system here, Jupiter is also a functional malefic here also, because it is the eighth lord. Yeah, but I don't, I, I, I don't mix the systems, so I don't, Yeah. I mean, honestly, when I learned Jaimini, I don't remember hearing anything about functional benefic and functional. Okay. okay. I could be wrong. You know, you'd have to find somebody that really teaches the, 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 the nuances because I, I don't, I, I only have a surface knowledge of it, but I can tell you in, I have seen people where the Ganadi Karaka didn't cause so much trouble. Okay. Um, in, in my case, I can tell you, even when I get a Bukti, a sub-period of Pisces, it's bad. Okay. But that's, that's how it works for me. So I, I don't know. Um, so the way the other aspects work is that all the cardinal signs are aspected the cardinal signs are aspected by the fixed signs. There's an exception, however. So let's say that a person is in the Aries Dasha. That's a cardinal sign. The fixed signs would be Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, right? That's four. four. But when it comes to the cardinal signs, it's aspected by all the fixed signs except for the fixed sign next door. Next door to Aries is a fixed sign Taurus. 
because it's next door, it does not aspect that it does not aspect Aries. So if we took cancer, cancer is a cardinal sign. It's aspected by all the fixed signs, which would mean Aquarius, which would mean Scorpio and Leo. But because Leo is next door, it does not aspect. Okay. And then it's the same way with the fixed signs. If a person's in a fixed sign like Taurus, it's aspected by all the cardinal signs. It's aspected by Cancer and any planets in the sign of Cancer. It's aspected by Libra because that's cardinal and any planets in Libra would aspect it. And it's aspected by Capricorn because it's cardinal. But there's a cardinal sign right next door to Taurus is Aries, which is cardinal. Because it's next door, it does not aspect. So put up my son's, put up Julian's chart. And I will show you why he was so upset about when he entered, when he entered the uh, Gemini. So his horoscope, his horoscope has the Cancer Ascendant, and he entered Gemini. And Gemini is the 12th house. That's already a problem. That's going to be something that makes it a little bit difficult. Now, it could make it spiritual, but it can make it difficult. And then it's aspected. So Gemini is mutable. So it's aspected by Virgo, by Sagittarius, and by Pisces. Those are the mutable, all the mutables. So Gemini, the 12th house, is aspected by the third house. Now, the third house is not, but some astrologers consider it a dashtana. I don't consider it a dashtana. It's not as bad as 6, 8, and 12, but it's after 6, 8, and 12, the next house that's a little bit difficult is the third. It's the third. And then it's as, his, his Gemini is aspected by Sagittarius, which is the sixth house. No good. Now, in, in his case, the Ganadi Karaka is the moon. The moon is in eight degrees. Okay. It's the sixth. The only planet lower by degree for him is Venus, which is the marriage indicator at zero degrees. So the moon is the sixth, it's, so it's the 12th house aspected by the third house, that's already two strikes against it. Then it's aspected by the sixth house, Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is holding Gennady Karaka, the planet in the sixth degree, sixth lowest, sixth highest degree. That's, that is enough to make that Gemini Dasha not a good Dasha. Then it's aspected by Pisces, and Pisces is good. Pisces is the ninth house. So that's good. Pisces holds the sun. And the sun for him is in the second highest degree, which would be money or career. And Jupiter is there. Jupiter is the third, in his case, the Karaka of the third, brothers and sisters. He doesn't have brothers and sisters. But the third house would be the arts and energy and getting desires fulfilled and, and things like that. So, um, so the, the, the thing that, that in the early years that got me a little bit tripped up with Jaimini was that I'm so used to Parashara that if I saw, if I saw, say, Sagittarius, you know, I would think, oh, well, Sagittarius is his sixth house, so it'll be about work and health and healing and things like that. And there is some of that because Sagittarius is his sixth house. But the truth is, the Sagittarius Dasha, if he's in a Sagittarius Dasha, that will be mostly about religion, philosophy, and higher knowledge. 
when he was in Gemini Dasha, it was definitely a bad Dasha because of those houses involved. But the essential energy, <coughs> excuse me, the essential energy was Gemini. Okay, so Gemini is writing and teaching, and the troubles he had were mostly about school. He had troubles in school. He didn't. He would do his homework and forget to bring it into class. He didn't want to do homework. It was Gemini. Okay, so if you're used to Parashara, there is a tendency to say, "Oh, he's in Capricorn." That's his seventh house. It'll be mostly relationship. No, it's Capricorn. It will be mostly Capricorn, which is career. And then if it rules the seventh house, and then if it's aspected by the Ganadi Karaka. But you must remember that the Dasha system is the signs. So that's what I found uh, to be a little confusing. When I went into my Leo, I was in Virgo for a long time, and I really didn't like it. It was all health and health matters and problems and work and things like that. When I went into Leo, Leo is my fourth house. And so I thought, oh, it'll be a lot about the fourth house, which is land and homes and real estate. But in fact, the most noticeable thing was that when I went into the Leo, when I went into Leo, let me give you the date of this. It's fairly recent, I think. Um, uh, this wrong one. Here we go. When I went into Leo was October 2012. And what I noticed was that was around the time that I started doing some YouTubes. And Leo is the sign of performers and leaders, politicians, actors and performers and things like that. And I just started to notice that when I went into that period, it seemed to, it seemed to make me, this is October 2012, so it's really 2013 and 14 and 15. I started doing some YouTubes and it seems like I started to be noticed and recognized more, which was Leo energy. So Leo's my fourth house and I was looking for land and real estate and things like that. But it was more Leo. It was more about being a performer and getting recognition. That's what it felt like anyway. So um, now 